Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. And Colin, today we are joined by none other than running backs coach for North Texas, Patrick Cobbs. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate you guys having me. You have a very nice scenic, uh, what is that, your backyard? It is. It's my backyard. Trying to enjoy good weather before it becomes miserable outside I'm in terribly Texas. hot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That, that's how it goes. You got like three weeks or four or five weeks here where it's like in the 80s as the highs. And you're like, OK, we can survive we're that, this. We're a happy window right now. I got to enjoy it before. It's brutal. Exactly. Um, well, obviously, coach, um, if we just I mean, you've been there, what, since 2019. I think I remember looking it up. February 2019, you're hired as the running backs coach in North Texas. Since then, obviously, you know, we had the whole COVID situation. Um, now it going through all those years, uh, several good running back groups, which we'll get into in a bit. But what has it been like for you working at North Texas overall? Obviously, now a new coaching staff, you, you were retained. Uh, just what, what has it all been like for you? It's been great, man. I'm super blessed by Coach Latrell to get hired over here, um, following T-Choice, who did a, a fantastic job with these guys. It's been good, man. The transition's been good. This is home, so it really wasn't tough for me, you know, playing here, kind of having a different feel to those guys because I played here and the same position and things like that. Not just my position, though, but all the all the football guys. Um, it's been good. Uh, new staff has been good. It's been great. You know, the transition's a little crazy. I was super thrilled to be retained uh, from Coach Morris. Um Super ecstatic about that. But everything's been good, man. The, the transition's been good. The players seem to be, you know, gelling and trying to pick up all the all the new things. It's really a lot of a lot of verbiage change and things like that. But for the most part, blessed for the opportunity to learn a little bit more ball. Um, love soaking it in from a new staff and trying to, you know, pick up a little nuggets here and there from from these guys. You already kind of mentioned it, the, that transition. What is that transition like? Because I feel like it's got to be kind of hectic going from one coaching staff to a new coaching staff and kind of being in limbo for a little bit. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different things. So from the from the coaching side, you know, the, the relationships that you have with players, um, lucky for me that I kind of already had it. But, you know, getting a new coaching staff, trying to get build those relationships as fast as possible with today's age. Um, guys being able to get into the portal and leave and do those things, guys coming in and having relationship or talking with guys, trying to build relationships, trying to let them know what they're all about, giving them a chance to to stick around and try to um, prove a little something to them, you know, because it's, it's easy these days to just hit the eject button and, mm -hmm. and guys kind of take that route. And unfortunately for us, you know, at our level, we, we lose a lot of good players to bigger schools because of those transitions. And so uh, that's the things that we want to avoid. Um, most kids gave us a chance to kind of get through spring ball to try to figure it out. But, you know, it's tough. I mean, it's tough on any staff. You know, you build a relationship with a bunch of guys that recruited you, that's coached you, that's loved you up and, and done those things. Sometimes it's hard to just take another guy in right off the bat, you know, so – you know, they're at the end of the day, I call them adults, but they're still kids. You know, they, they're trying to figure it out and trying to learn um, and try to understand what they don't know. You know what I mean? So it's it's a tough transition for everybody. Yeah. And you've you've been able to, as far as running backs go, keep the same group year over year. Uh, get Bring in freshmen like BK Jackson a couple of years ago, Quillan Farrar last year. Um what has what has it been like for you to keep the group rolling and keep it going uh, with guys like Akaika and Oscar and Ao and guys like that? Yeah, I, th I think our room's been good because of the you know just kind of the mentality we've had going in. You know, it's been a competition based deal. Um, obviously, their coach didn't change, so it was a little easier for us. Uh, but the atmosphere did. You know, there we we do have a new head coach. It is a new you know a new era of you know Eric Morse's team and. Um, things are different, but at the end of the day, they have their position coach. They got a guy that believes in them, that knows them. Um, and so, you know, we, we've been based off competition. So competition doesn't really scare them, you know, learning new systems, you know, reacting to new plays, things like that. Doesn't, doesn't really chase those guys off. So I'm 
super ecstatic that those guys are there. I have a good group of guys that want to compete that I think will play uh, play ball here for a long time. You, you kind of already, I, I guess, mentioned it. You know, obviously, it's, you said it's easy to hit the eject button for some of these guys. A lot of the players we've interviewed, every time we've asked them, but what made them want to stay, it was kind of that family atmosphere and everything like that. But from a coaching perspective, what does it take to retain guys like Oscar, Isaiah, and, and AOD who could just, you know, like you said, hit the eject button if they really wanted to? You know, it's kind of the family atmosphere. You build a group um, about the group. And one thing that really doesn't change in all the coaching changes is the players, if they want them to. You know, if those players really start caring about each other, and I really feel like that's what what's happening. I mean, those kids have been through a lot of adversity um, over the last couple of seasons being, you know, you you guys know the record over the last couple of years. And then battling out and going mm-hmm. to a championship game, they've been through a bunch of struggles and their backs have been against the wall with each other. And whenever you go through a bunch of adversity with somebody, you build a real tight relationship. So it's hard to leave guys like like that that's been in the trenches with you I feel like those running backs have kind of gelled together and and wanted to be together and wanted to kind of finish this thing out you know Oscar graduated I got a couple more guys about to graduate in December um and then next spring so uh those guys have done it the right way uh and I and I hope to continue to do that I was curious it's kind of shifting gears here to go back to the last four three or four years here um, because in 2020 is kind of when y'all took off and became a kind of a run heavy team. And y'all really started pounding, I think like 200 yards per game on the ground, 2021, same thing, 2022, same thing. What was, what was it like seeing that shift in the offense kind of, and becoming a more run oriented team and having success on the ground like that, um, with, with you as the running backs coach? It's really, you know, it really kind of comes down to personnel. You know, when you, when you got, a coaching staff trying to do the best that they can to win. You know, I think our running back group kind of stepped forward and kind of showed that they were the best group on the team. Before that, you had Mason Fine and you had, you know, mm-hmm. NFL receivers and Rico Bussy and Jalen Guyton and, you know, yeah. Michael Lawrence and, and all these big-time receivers and a big-time quarterback, so throwing the ball makes sense. Well, you lose those guys and you have a bunch of injuries at receiver and your linemen are really built to run the ball it makes sense to start running the ball, kind of transition towards that way, do the things that we can do to be successful on the field. You know, it's, um, it usually comes down to personnel. If if you're, if your personnel suits you best to run the ball and and try to keep your defense off the field, then that's what you need to do. So it, it all kinds of works hand in hand when you're, when you're trying to draw up plays, like, you know, um, how can we put our kids in the best possible position to make plays? With that being said, with, you know, with having to have the the offense kind of be run heavy in the last few years, what's it like for, you know, having a guy like Oscar Attaway, uh, Iodei, and, and uh, Ragsdale, who've all kind of had that, like, lead, they all have that lead back ability and having to balance that? Because obviously, you know, you're playing all of them. Yeah, I mean, they, they've, they've all had their chair, you know, they've all had their turn, you know, when you run the ball as much as they, you need all of them, you know. Offenses, but they've kind of changed. You know, everybody plays faster, so you're getting a lot more plays in. And so those yeah. guys played a lot of ball. And don't forget about Isaiah, who's been banged up, who's been a yeah. – yeah. numbers don't show up, but that guy's made some big-time third-down plays for us in short yardage situations and passing situations. So so rush yards may not show up, but that kid, he picks up pass protection better than anybody. So having those four guys has been a tremendous – you know, help to the younger guys, been a tremendous help to each other because they can take, you know, hits off each other. Running back's hard, man. You you, you get, when you do the impact test, and I really didn't know this, now that everybody has all this technology, the running backs gets hit three, four times a play. You know, they, when they carry the ball, they hit once or twice, and then they hit the ground, that counts as a hit. I mean, they're getting beat up quite a bit. And so be able to, you know, balance that load with four guys it helps them kind of stay healthy and it helps the group stay high you know and and having that competition throughout fall camp and through spring things like that kind of elevates the group so it's been good i've i've always been curious about ao days ao days story kind of coming from i mean spent one season i think it was at d2 and then makes transition over there and as soon as he gets to north texas he impacts y'all's backfield do you, can you go back and like think about or tell us like how you you got him on campus, what it was like seeing him and being like, all right, this guy can actually help us win. 
Io showed up in the spring and, uh, you know, he, he came and, um, like I said, it, it was a, it was kind of a rough transition for him. He left Harding, which is a, a complete another story, but he left during COVID, didn't have anything. He went there in the fall of COVID, didn't get to play. They canceled his season. He came, he comes and walks on in North Texas. Um, he's fast. He has good film. I understand why he didn't get recruited. He grew a lot in the spring. Um, he's a really smart guy, and that's what helped him. Um, mm -hmm. He was able to pick up things, be in the right spot, do the right things all the time. Um, but he had a lot to polish up on. But the thing about him was once you told him, he corrected it. He fixed it. He did it right away. And so you could see the growth happening almost overnight. Once you told him something, he locked it in and it carried over to the next day. And then it was from the meeting room to the practice field. He over and over and over again, he just continued to get better. Um, he had a bit of a fumble problem that we had to address. And once he addressed that, um, he had a really good fall camp and we got into a situation where he had a good practice one day. He was the special teams practice player of the week. And when we go to a game, I, we travel him to Louisiana tech next thing we're looking around and three backs are hurt and one's tired. And we're like, all right, we'll get in. And then, you know, talking about a guy that's making the most of his situations, he wouldn't even been at that game had he not had a good week of practice mm -hmm. and then, uh, ends up showing up and then. It's kind of like, I mean, as cliche as it is, the rest is history. I mean, he's stepped up in the right situations. He's had a good play here and there, and he's kind of busted that thing wide open. Now, if we look at Eric Morris, obviously he comes in as an offensive-minded type of coach. Seth the Trail was also an offensive-minded coach. Um, I understand there's a lot of differences between the two. Um, but if we just focus on Eric Morris or Coach Morris specifically – I've heard he's a very meticulous guy, very plan oriented, you know, kind of gets in the details with a lot of things. Um, how does that show when he's working with y'all as coaches and also obviously with the team? Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's been about his business, man. We, we, we meet, um, there are a lot of details and everything we've done. Uh, as far as offensive going, like we've done a good job. He's been around. We've, we've, I mean, and recruiting is different. Everything is different. Like we've, we've, it's, it's way into more detail of everything we do. Um, I'm interested in fall camp, man, just to get around him, kind of dive into offense. Cause you know, the first, I don't know, what is this five months at his job, he's been kicking and swimming, just being a head coach. You know what I mean? So we haven't really been able to dive a ton in the ton into football together. We have dove into it at different, like, periodically and, and things like that over time, but I'm ready for, you know, all of this craziness to wear out and we can really dive into ball this fall. How have you seen, because we talked to some of the players and some of them are like, all right, we're trying to grasp this new offense and how complicated it can be at times. Uh, when it comes to the running back position or just running backs, has it, have your guys had to adjust, had to learn a lot uh, on the fly about maybe different um, schematics for, on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's a bunch of new things. That was a deep side. <laughs> everything, well, I'll, I'll tell you this, everything is new, but the, the luxury that those guys have is the fact that I played in their offense last year. And so I can translate a lot of things. I can say, hey, this play is like this play from last year. Or I can mm -hmm. say, hey, this, me this word means this word from last year. And I can kind of bridge the gap to where they can understand it a little faster and they can write it in their notes and they can, it's more of a verbiage change thing um, mm. for my guys and being able to, to learn a new language more than it is a new play. Cause the plays are the plays, you know, everybody runs the same plays. The oh, verbiage is different. Yeah. How each things are a little bit different, but everybody runs the same, same plays. Now they're, they're taught a little bit different, but on paper, if you drew a play, there's a thousand different words for the play and there's a thousand different ways to coach it. But it's, a, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still the same play. Kind of wanted to shift a little bit. Uh, I saw a picture on uh, Twitter of, uh, with you, uh, Lance and Jeff, and obviously you played in the NFL yourself. How, how does that one, how does that help playing the NFL and be able to come back to your, uh, to your uh, university and, and coach? And then to having those guys kind of come in and be like, Hey, you guys can also become what I am, you know, with Jeff and Lance also going to the NFL. <laughs> It's good, man. Having guys back is is fantastic, man. I, I Lance was big 
the time for us last year, man. He he came around all fall um, during the weekly game planning stuff, during every practice. I mean, Lance Lance was around a lot and really grew in our relationship together. He wants to be a coach now. Um, he's, he's done a good job, and I think he'll do a good job as a coach one day. Uh, mm-hmm. For the flip side, Jeff, you know, still playing ball. It's good to see him back and kind of talk and, and come around and hang out with the guys and things like that. So it's fun, man. I mean – Playing football is fun. Being around North Texas is fun. Playing the NFL is fun. And those guys look up to that. You know, I, I mean, I think that the newness or the the NFL portion of me playing in the NFL kind of wore off. Um, I'm just a coach now. But, you know, having a guy that's played in the league and come back and kind of hang out that's still playing in the league when they can, you know, watch him on Sundays is, is great. So being around um, – it means a lot, man. It means a lot for the university. You really want everybody to come back and hang out. Craig Robinson comes a lot, come back yeah. and he hangs out a lot. And actually, we go play golf together. You know, man, me, Craig, and Lance, we go play a lot of golf. We've kind of built a relationship where we hang out quite a bit. So it's good, man, to have have those things. And I didn't play ball with them here. You know, we're all kind of at different time zones and at North Texas. But um, being able to have that letter – Letter winners mentality, old school guys coming together and still being around is good. I meant, I meant to ask you what you shoot in golf. <laughs> Man, well, at once upon a time I was pretty decent. Now I'm, I I don't get to play enough to be good. I get I play enough to be not embarrassing. I guess mm. you could. Say. Um, close to a hundred? Huh? You close to a hundred? No, sir. I don't know. I know. No, no, no. Like today, I didn't play very well. I shot at 87. 87 is oh, pretty good, though. 87, that's not bad. Yeah, I played I played with a lot of people who do not shoot anywhere near that. <laughs> you know, golf, golf's funny. I mean, like, well, for me anyways, you know, I go out and I'll play, you know, 14 holes good, and I'll play four, four holes bad and end up with an 80. You know what I mean? 87. Yeah. So it just it's just kind of one of those deals to where you can be hitting. I mean, golf's hard. It is hard. I mean, just being consistent every play, it just that's what makes it fun, though. It makes it fun. Every hole's different. Every swing's different. Um, just trying to beat the game. It's undefeated. Golf is undefeated. You just kind of want to show up and have a good time and, and move on. I just got the uh, the golf bug two summers ago, and I was shooting like 130-something. I'm finally shooting like 91, 92. So we, anytime we hear someone mention golf on the podcast, we got to ask them like what they shoot. 90, from, a, from 130 to 92 – yeah, last year I was a 36 handicap, and now I'm a 17. You're the most improved player in golf history. <laughs> well, it was bad because yeah, I didn't get lessons. I was just I just went out there. I just I just hit, I just hit that, the thing. At the end of the day, I, me too. I've never gotten a lesson before either. You yeah. just kind of work your own swing, try to make it as consistent as possible, and let a lot of old guys give you a lot of pointers while you're out there. That's it. Yeah, I I, I think most people that were shooting 130 just quit. They didn't. I didn't yeah. go back. So so that's why Colin is the most improved. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you just got to grind it out, man. It is what it is. It's fun, though, man. I love golf. It's probably – it's it's one of those sports that I'll play forever, man. Yeah. I look forward to retirement just to play golf every just single day. Golf. Would you say that's your second sport? Because we ask all the players, like, what's their second sport if they didn't play football? If you didn't play football, what would be your second sport? Uh, In high school, I didn't, I didn't start playing golf until I was – I guess I played yeah. a few – in college, I didn't really start playing golf till later on in life. So, yeah. Uh, now, if I could go back and do it all over again, I probably would have tried to play golf in high school or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, we always ask that. Anytime we hear golf, we just we just perk up. We just, we yeah, just what, about, hmm. what about what about you, Bruin? You didn't you didn't uh, you didn't say anything. What's your handicap? No, 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 no. <laughs> he, he played. I think he played. Man, nah, coach. No, nah, no. Nah, I still got questions here for you. My man said 130, and you didn't even blink. (laughs) You didn't even blink. No, I don't know. You've gone for what, like five times ever? I think think if you went out, if you went out right now, could you break 120? That's that's the bar. That's I think (laughs) I'm. Last summer I was at about 120. Yeah, he shot. I think he shot 120 with me last summer. That was the that's the bar. So if I got to go back out there and yo, oh no, that's a whole grind again. Bring is that, that like a, is that, 
five hour round of golf or what? I mean, how long does it take? To shoot okay, one? coach. All right. You'd be you'd be surprised, honestly, because you just you don't. I mean, you can't go out of bounds really, so it just goes like it just rolls. So you just well, I don't look from my hole. I don't. You know, I, you get to play a lot of golf though. You get a lot of swings in. I'm kind of jealous sometimes. You know what I mean? You play a lot of golf. I'm it with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You maybe you should read that book. Like I, I might need to get that book. Maybe I can get down to more consistent <laughs> yeah. golf. Exactly. Um. All right. I still got a couple more questions here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Rudy Shoot. just just got serious. Move, <laughs> moving to moving because on. now now I thought about my golf game and I'm like, damn, I really did shoot a 120. That was. Not great. <laughs> I'll all right. bringing that up, that's man. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, moving to the American. Mm. That's that's the big storyline. Everyone's excited about that. Everyone's always like, "All right, moving to the American." What what new? I don't know ch- if new challenges or new excitement is there for you? When you know, obviously, you're the one that's that's back, and the players are back too. Going from Conference Tuesday to the American, uh, what's that like for you? I think it's great, man. I love to step up, and I love being able to compete. At, at, at the highest level, you know, last year we got to play Memphis should have won that game. Um, it's one of those games that you kind of look back on and you kind of kick yourself in. And we had a few of those, but um, we can compete with those teams. And I mean, I'm excited to play in it. I think that the, the level of ball kind of steps up a sec or a level or two, but you get to go recruit better players. You get to recruit, you know, bigger markets, things like that. And, uh, you get to go have fun against great environments week in and week out and uh, expected to win, you know, when you go play power five teams. So, I mean, I'm excited about it. That you, you took my next question where it's like, we, it feels like from a recruiting standpoint, that's where the biggest difference is, is you can go out and sell yourself even more. So with the American behind you, rather than conference USA, uh, do you feel that? Do you, do you think that's tangible? I do. I just think, you know, today's day and age, kids are kids are on social media. I'm not sure like me, you and, you know, I think we understand some of the older guys and guys that really dig into the college football. They really understand the American. I think there's a bunch of kids that really don't understand. They, they know D1 and they know Power 5 and that's pretty much it. So mm-hmm. I don't think they dig into some of those other conferences as much. Um, but for the good players and for, you know, the coaches that really can sell our program, like when you go in and you talk to a kid and you really love them up and then you talk to the coach and the coach can really sell that program from the American standpoint to that kid. That's the difference. I think when everybody around them, usually people that are out or in their circle that that have a little more understanding of what's going on, that's the sale. And then so. Sometimes you can find a lot of kids that understand the difference between the American and Sun Belt, and but most of the time the coaches do, and so that's that's the difference. Yeah. Does moving to the American kind of make it uh, to where recruiting is more of a competition between North Texas and SMU, for example, because you guys are both kind of recruiting the same areas, or is it basically the same? Yeah, we've been recruiting against SMU. I mean, for the last few years, every year that I've been here, we still recruit against SMU. I think, I think generally looking forward i i don't think i think when you're in a conference i think you try to recruit a conference up so realistically if we're trying to i mean we really should be trying to recruit against you know what is what is kansas state going after what is oklahoma state Mm -hmm. going after and how can we go try to compete with those guys because you really want to recruit a conference up because at the end of the day you're going to be asked to beat the conference up like last year we were we were asked to beat teams in the american yeah so how to beat teams in the American? You got to get players that can play in the American. So now we're going to be asked to be teams in the Big Twelve. So how do you beat teams in the Big Twelve? You got to go recruit players that maybe get combed through or maybe get passed by by the Big Twelve and find those guys. Now, do you have to do a little more work? Sure, but you got to go find those diamonds in the roughs, those guys that can play at that level, because you got to have those players to beat those teams at the end of the day. Well, and then obviously y'all already have three. I mean. Uh, you already have a lot of Dallas player type commits, uh, but just like, could you tell from Eric Morris and obviously Coach O, and you got all these guys in here and that are all freaking Texas high school football guys? Has that been a change for 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 you? I guess to to watch them and then also just to interact with them as them they are like 
entrenched in this high school, um, Texas high school life? Yeah, the the social media um, standpoint, you know, and and then our recruiting areas are bigger. We got more people on staff now. You know, going to the mm-hmm. American, you get way more people on staff. Like we didn't have, like we, there's probably ten. I won't say ten, but there's you know eight eight or so guys more than we had on staff last year. So we get to add more people. Um, we get to comb over the areas even more. So that's that's another thing that moving up to the American gets you. You get more people on staff. You're able to do a lot more. You're able to, you know, go over things with a fine comb because there are more, you know, more hands in the pot. So um, that's been the positive of it. You know, we got more people. We got more staff members. We got bigger areas. And um, we're able to, you know, kick the bushes for a lot more kids. Yeah. Um, you got anything else, Colin? Uh, I think that's it for me. Unless you have anything else. No, I was just gonna say um, when you were started talk, coach. When you started talking about you know kicking yourself about the Memphis game, I I, I started coaching an AAU team this summer, an AAU basketball team this summer, coach. <laughs> and um, we played this past weekend championship game. Down one, six six seconds left. We drop an inbounds play execute it perfectly score five seconds left they have to go the length of the court they call timeout they skip it ahead and make a ridiculous pass catch and ridiculous finish at the buzzer and we lose at the horn so that's still on my mind um so i that's, feel you but- i don't want to bring up bad memories because they really you know don't like those guys but that sounds like a lot like the utsa game the first one mm. so. oh. oh yeah and, you know don't- that up but that's what that felt like when you were telling that story that that one hurt me uh, they, they all yeah that hurt me it's funny hurt i'm me. actually my <laughs> my uh cardenas the the tight end is actually my what is it my dad my dad's cousin's son so there you go your dad's cardenas. cousin what would that yeah. be like a six so- cousin does that even count would- no idea. I don't know if that counts or not, but I just so would you would you fight him if you seen him? <laughs> yeah, I need to see a six five Oscar Cadenas out there. Got your back. No, I'm just <laughs> no he, that what a heck of a play. I mean, when you when you have a season like those guys have had over the last couple of years, I mean you gotta have plays like that to have a streak like that keep going. So yeah. Kudos to those guys for making the plays when it's time to make the plays. And that's the difference in football, man. It's not round. It's kind of – sometimes it bounces in the ways that you don't expect it to bounce because it's not a round ball. Uh, you know, both of my parents went to the UTSA. So, I've – let's just say after the 2021 win in the rain, my dad did not hear the end of it. <laughs> did not hear the end of it. And then last year, I didn't hear the end of it. So, that's just I, how it goes. But they got – you know, it's – you know – they got to beat us at our place, and we need to figure out a way to beat them at theirs. So here we go. Right. That's right. That's right. All right. That's it. We kept you long enough. You're probably going to bit my mosquitoes and everything over there. No, no, man. I'm getting pecked on me. No, I appreciate you guys, man. It's an honor. I love what you are doing, man. Keep growing this thing. Go Mean Green. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will do. Well, appreciate it for, for joining us, man.